Scotland in the Modern Era, from the Scottish Reform Act 1832. Until the end of the century they managed to gain a majority of the Westminster parliamentary seats for Scotland, although these were often outnumbered by the much larger number of English and Welsh Conservatives. From the mid-century there were increasing calls for home rule for Scotland, and when the Conservative Lord Salisbury became Prime Minister in 1885 he responded to pressure for more attention to be paid to Scottish issues by reviving the post of Secretary of State for Scotland, which had been in abeyance since 1746. Under these twin stimuli, Scottish thinkers began questioning assumptions previously taken for granted, and with Scotland's traditional connections to France, then in the throes of the Enlightenment, the Scots began developing a uniquely practical branch of humanism to the extent that Voltaire said we look to Scotland for all our ideas of civilization. While the Scottish Enlightenment is traditionally considered to have concluded toward the end of the 18th century, disproportionately large Scottish contributions to British science and letters continued for another 50 years or more, thanks to such figures as James Hutton, James Watt, William Murdoch, James Clerk Maxwell, Lord Kelvin and Sir Walter Scott. In the early 20th century there was a new surge of activity in Scottish literature and art, influenced by modernism and resurgent nationalism, known as the Scottish Renaissance. As Divine concludes, Johnson was a giant figure in Scottish politics and is revered to this day as the greatest Scottish secretary of the century. In essence, Johnson was promised the powers of a benign dictator. Many major Scottish post-war novelists, such as Muriel Spark, James Kennaway, Alexander Trochai, Jesse Kesson, and Robin Jenkins spent much or most of their lives outside Scotland, but often dealt with Scottish themes as in Spark's Edinburgh set the prime of Miss Jean Brodie and Kennaway's script for the film Tunes of Glory. John Bellany, mainly focusing on the coastal communities of his birth, and Alexander Moffat, who concentrated on portraiture both grouped under the description of Scottish realism, were among the leading Scottish intellectuals from the 1960s. Four million, four hundred two thousand, one hundred thirty-five six nine.